Rust Library, and today I'm going to be talking about what I hope is going to be fun for you. I'm going to be talking about braiding hair. I have my helper here. You may recognize her from the library's American Girl doll collection. I also have a couple other friends here too, and we'll get to them too. They're going to be helping me demonstrate some basic hair braids. So feel free to braid along with me if you want, if you have a doll you want to practice on, or if you're with a friend and you want to do your own hair to each other's hair, or if maybe somebody is doing your hair. Maybe you are with your grown up and you want to do your own, have your own hair braided. That's cool too. So if you think I'm going too quickly for you, don't hesitate to hit the pause button. And of course, if you need closed captioning, don't hesitate to hit that button at the bottom of the screen as well. So why are we doing braids? Well, for a couple of reasons. For one, braids are a lot of fun to do. It doesn't matter if you're braiding your own hair or your friend's hair or the hair in a doll. They're just fun to do. I even braided my hair this morning. You can't really see it because it's in the back and I didn't do a very good job. But I wanted to braid it today just for you. Also, braids are the stepping stone to a lot of other different styles. So if you know how to braid your hair, you can pretty much do anything you want with your hair. And braids look good on pretty much everybody. It doesn't matter if your hair is short or long or curly or straight, a braid will look good. Now, that doesn't mean to say that every single braid out there is going to look good on every single type of hair. Some braids will look better on thicker hair or shorter hair or, you know, what, whatever. But there is a braid out there that will look good on any type of hair. So I'm going to be referring to the hair that you are going to be working on as your hair. It might be your hair, your own hair. It might be a friend's hair or it might be your doll's hair, but I'll just be calling it your hair. And before we get started, we want to make sure that your hair is free of any tangles. That's gonna make the braiding process just so much easier if we don't have to stop and keep combing out any tangles or knots. So you're gonna need a couple of things. You're going to need a comb or a pick, probably also a brush. You're going to need a little spray bottle with some water in it. This one's empty, but you can have some water in it. This is gonna help prevent like little flyaways and frizz. It also helps detangle too, if you haven't done that already. You're gonna need some elastics. I have a couple of different sizes here. These are the typical ones that you would use for a ponytail. I also have a couple of, let's see if you can hold them up so you can see. These are just really small, sort of rubber band type elastics. You're going to need some bobby pins to braid, to hold some styles together. You are going to need some clips. These are clips, uh, they're good for if you're only working on a specific section of hair, then you can take the rest of the hair that you're not working on and just clip it away so it is not in your way as you're working on it. Another thing that you might wanna use is, this is called a rat tail comb. And you can use it to detangle, but it's what it's really good for is for making parts. So if you were using, if you wanna part your hair into sections, like say you wanted to make braided pigtails, you could use this, the tail of the comb, to part your hair. You may also want some fun barrettes or ribbons if you want something a little bit more in your hair than just elastics. And again, this is optional, but you may also want some hair gel. So I'm gonna start out with a basic demonstration of a regular three-strand braid. This is going to be the basis for all the other hairstyles that we're gonna be doing. So if you master this, this one, you'll be, you were all set. So I've taken a section of Julie's hair. I'm gonna just give it a 
brush. And I'm going to divide it into three sections that are all pretty much the same size. Now it doesn't really matter which, so you don't matter which side I'm going to start with. I am going to start with this strand that is on my right, your left, just because it's easier for me. But it doesn't matter which side you're st starting with. So I'm going to take this section and I'm going to cross it over the middle section. And now that section becomes the new middle section. And this section that I'm holding with my right hand now becomes the new right section. Okay, so now I'm taking the section that I have in my left hand and I'm going to cross it over the middle section and it becomes the new middle section. And now this is my new left section. And now I'm gonna repeat that. I'm gonna take my right section and cross it over into the middle. And I'm gonna take the left section and cross it over into the middle. And I'm just gonna keep repeating that. Right over middle, left over middle. Right over middle, left over middle right over middle, left over middle. And I'm just gonna keep doing that, right over middle, left over middle, all the way down for as long as I want my braid to be. Right over middle, left over middle. 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 So when the braid is as long as you want it to be, see that I have braided pretty much down the whole length of her hair. You just take an elastic and you secure it. Sometimes you, some people have hair that you don't need to secure it. My hair will fall apart if I do that and Julie's will too. So we can do that. So congratulations. That's all there is to a three strand braid and you've just mastered it. So good job. I want you to give yourself a pat on the back for that. So now that we've mastered the basic three strand braid, let's mix it up a little bit. So let's turn Julie a little bit. She's a little wiggly. This is called the reverse braid. Get another brush. Okay. And with the reverse braid, the technique is pretty much the same. You're going to take your hair, divide it into three sections. All right, a middle and a left. But this time, instead of taking the right section over the middle section, we're going to take it under the middle section. And now it still becomes the new middle section. And now we're gonna take the left section and put it under the middle section and it becomes the new middle section. So now we'll repeat that. Right, under middle, left, under middle. Right, under middle, left, under middle. Right, under middle, left, under middle. And then just keep doing that. Right, under middle, left, under middle down as far as you want the braid to be. So now I've pretty much braided it down the length of Julie's hair. So I'm going to take another elastic. And secure it. So there you have mastered the basic three strand braid in two different techniques. You've done the regular one and you've done the reverse. And you'll notice that this one looks like it's going down. This one looks like it's going up, but it's the same braid. It's just that one, it looks inside out. So let's do something fun else. we're gonna talk about the snake braid. Now, I have also heard this called 
the macrame braid. I have heard it called a push-up braid, but I think snake braid is usually the most common one. It's the one that I've heard the most often. So you take a small section of braid. This is usually not one that you use on large chunks of hair. You just take a small section, which makes it great. This section, this is great for people who have very short hair or fine hair, fine thin hair. And you braid it down as far as you want and then a little bit longer. So braid it down pretty far down. You want it a little bit longer than what you normally want it. Once you have it braided down a little bit longer than you want it, you hold on to the middle strand and then you, pinching the bottom, push it up the whole way up the hair. And then I'll sort of move it up. You can see that it's kind of knotted. It kind of looks like knots there. Now you can slide it back down a little bit and that opens up the pattern. And this is a great one to sort of tie in the back of your hair if you wanted to. So this is a great style, not only for people who have short hair or very thin hair, it's also a great style for people who have very straight hair because the, the curves in the snake pattern will really stand out against straight hair. They might get a little lost with curly hair. So that, that's the snake hair, snake braid. So now what we're gonna cover is called, so new friend, this is Kaya. We're gonna talk about milkmaid braids. Now milkmaid braids, you may also hear, see them being referred to as Heidi braids or crown braids. In this style, you divide the hair in two, useful for the rat tail comb and braid each section of hair into a pigtail, just the way Kaya is. Then you secure each braid, and then you wrap the braid up over the top of your head. Just like that. And at this point, you want to put a bobby pin in a couple, bo you'll probably want a couple bobby pins if you're doing multiple people, actual hair, and that will hold the braid in place. Now, you are gonna want your hair to be a rather long for this style, at least past your, your shoulder braids if you have straight hair. Otherwise, the braids aren't going to be long enough to go over your head. So just keep that in mind. So a variation on milkmaid braids. New helper. This is not one that you may know. This is my friend from my house. Her name is Megan. So a variation on milkmaid braids is the braided headband. And with the braided headband, you take a section of hair from around the ear. I don't know if you can see, you can see. I've taken a section of hair from around the ear and I braided it the whole way down. And then you take it and you lay it over the top of your head and pin it into place. And then you do the same thing on the other side of your hair. So I have my other strand. Lay it over the top of your head. Pin it into place. And also, you can see Megan's headband right there. So again, this is another hairstyle that you're gonna want pretty long hair to do. Megan's hair doesn't look all that long, but she gets away with it because her hair is curly. Uh, 
my hair, I would have to, st the shorter your hair is, the farther up your head you're going to have to start the, the hair, the braids. So I could start my hair above my ear and it still would not be long enough. The braids wouldn't be long enough to do, to do that, this style. So just keep that in mind. You do want some pretty long hair for this style. Although, grown-ups, I will say, there is a way to do the braided headband with shorter hair, but it involves a technique called lace braiding. And we're not gonna be covering that today because it gets a little complicated. So another style of hair to do with braids, this is Josefina, is a braided bun. And you can do braided buns anywhere on the head. If you put a bun in the center, at the back of her head, you have created a ballerina look. Or you could put buns on each side of your head and put one over above each ear and you have created Princess Leia's iconic look. So, but the technique of making them is pretty much the same. You make a ponytail, secure it at the top of, at the, top of the head, braid it the whole way down, secure the end, and then twist the braid around the ponytail holder that's holding it, the braid at the top of the braid. And then you can secure it a couple of different ways. You could pin it into place, or you could take another hair elastic and that will hold it into place too. It'll just give you a little bit of a different look. The last hairstyle I'm gonna cover, definitely not the least, the last one is micro braids or box braids. So there is a slight difference in technique. I think box braids are bigger and I think that the parts are a little bit more precise, but I'm not sure about that. So if you know more about box braids than I do, feel free to correct me on that. Um, but in terms of look, they are basically involving parting your hair into several different sections and make, making a lot of small braids all over your head, the way I have done with Addie's hair. I didn't do a very good job with parting her hair, but we're working on that. This is a style that looks really great on hair that is very thick and very curly, especially if it's very tight curls, because the tighter the curls, the easier it will hold, help hold the small braids together. So sometimes you might see girls who have very tight, curly hair with hairstyle this way. Also, grown-ups, this style takes a long time to do. So if you are planning on doing this style on your child, be prepared that you may want a book to give to your child. You may want to break out the Netflix uh, because it's, it's gonna take, depending on how, how much hair you're working with, it's gonna take at least a couple of hours to do this style of hair. Uh, one, and one technique that I have used is that a lot of times people will put a little bit of gel right at the top of each braid and that helps keeps, keep the frizz or flyaways in place if that's something that bothers you. So that's micro braiding or box braiding. So that's all the braids time that we have to go over today, um, but I hope you had fun. And I wanna emphasize that we literally just touched the surface of braiding and there are so many other different hairstyles out there that we could have gone over and we just didn't have the time. For instance, I touched on lace braiding when I talked about the braided headband and lace braiding is, is a subsection of French braiding. Uh, so if you wanted to learn more about that, I'm, and we didn't have that time. We just didn't have the time for that. But if you wanted to learn more about it, I do have several books here that include, include directions on 
different types of braids that we weren't able to discuss and go over. All of these are available at the library for checkout. Some are in the adult section, some are in the children's section. They all give pretty good step-by-step -step directions on how to do different braids. So thank you for joining me. Again, I hope you had a lot of fun doing this with me. And I hope that you learned uh, some new techniques and some new th ideas to do with your hair or your doll's hair or a friend's hair. If you have any comments or questions or ideas that you, for any future programs, feel free to let us know and we hope to see you next time. Bye!